Hello and welcome to the Bellhops Tabletop. I am Mo Tuzno, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge. Normally answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Tonight I guess the question we are answering is how well Deanna and I do at Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion scenario number two. So I am Mo Tuzno, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge. This is my wife Deanna. I'd like to welcome you to our tabletop. Tonight here in our game room we are going to be playing scenario two of Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. Uh, this is our second time playing. We just recently, just earlier today, played through scenario one. So first off, I will say, Deanna and I are experienced Gloomhaven players, having played multiple stories through that. We have not finished the original box set. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic, our campaign on that is on hold. But thanks to Tabletop Renaissance, Windsor's most recent game store, uh, we are getting a chance to check out Jaws of the Lion which we're streaming live on Twitch. Uh, we try to stream on Friday nights, 8.30 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv slash tabletopbellhop. I can't promise we'll be live every week in the time of the pandemic, but we'll try to be on there. Watch our social media accounts to see when we're going live. Other than that, you can head over to tabletopbellhop.com for all kinds of gaming content, including actual plays, unboxing videos, news, reviews, and other cool gaming content. So, Except for that short introduction, we're going to dive right in. So at this point, we have played Scenario 1. One of the things to note, Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion is an introductory version of the full Gloomhaven game. And it is doing a really good job of onboarding us so far. Um, it really walks you through how to play the game with very, uh, like, even simplified hand of cards at the beginning of the game. And a simplified system for the monsters. So it's slowly introducing things to us. So we're going to move on to Scenario 2. And... Thank you for joining us. So at this point, we have done what they call saving the game. Our Gloomhaven map is right here, and we have one sticker on it, which is right over here, which is scenario number two. We are going to grab the rule book that tells us what is going to change with scenario two. So now that we are moving on to the next section of the rule book, we have new stuff. So on to scenario two. First, we're going to turn to scenario two in the scenario book. Then, setup will be largely the same, except we're going to have some additional setup. In addition to the stack card standees and initiatives, we will also require the four basic Vermling Raider cards. And our character pools of ability cards now contain two level B cards, which is something we did. So one of the things we are going to show that is different from the other, so I think we're going to zoom in at this point. So, um, so we have additional features. So some of the things we have on the map, so we're going to set up the map, same as before. We now have money tokens. Mm -hmm. So we're going to place one money token. On every spot. Oh, I didn't get all the stuff every up. spot. It shows all the money. money. So we're going to grab our tray full of stuff here. And we're going to put money tokens out wherever you see a money. Which I'm guessing is yep. those yellowish ones. So just two. I see three. Oh, yep. Okay, the next thing we have is from now on, when we kill a bad guy, they will drop money. So that's good to know. When we kill monsters... We have treasure. I'm tempted to get my 3D stuff. Right here. We are going to place a treasure on here. This is another small complaint about the game. This did not come out punched well. We got an extra little taggy on there. And it is a gold chest. When a character collects a treasure chest, we're going to remove it from the map and look up something in the back of the scenario book. How are you going to do that while you're playing? When this treasure tell is oh, it's in the back for entry 14 in the treasure index on the inside back cover of the glossary. Oh, it's in the rule glossary, so fine. So, yeah. Okay, so we have treasure gold side because it's a... Yep. Gold box, okay. Gold box. And we have traps. These trap tiles do three damage each. So it shows there should be four traps. So we're going to put out traps. We're really amping up the difficulty here. And because they do three damage each, it says to put a three damage token on them, so we do not oh, that's forget. Good way to remember. That's actually right from the original game too. We just never did it. All right, we also have doors, I need one which is more. blue. Uh, one more what? Three damage. Right. So we have a door. You do not place the monsters on the other side of the door, and I gotta say that seems really silly to be honest, hmm. because you can see the whole map. So it's, it's already really odd in um, the original Gloomhaven that how much you should be able to read oh, ahead. so this is the door That's to the this door. Room. No, no. Like, we're or in, 
We're in that to room. come through here. Yes. Okay. See how there's a solid wall here? Yeah, yeah, I get We're it. actually breaking into the walls of Gloomhaven. Hmm. Uh, this is scenario number two, which I hope it says at the bottom of the screen. So when you move on to a door hex, you then pause. We then use these tokens, which are new to this game, to show the door's been opened. Okay. So if we had opened this door, this would go here to show that door's been opened. Um, other additional rules. We now can use our cards as basic actions. So if you look at your cards, all right, so we can use them as basic actions. Some cards may be lost. Looting lets you pick up any of the tokens that are in the range of the loot card. Uh, you may have area effects now where gray is where you are and red is the additional targets it hits. So again, all of that's from the old Gloomhaven. You may have a push or a pull. Uh, they have to move further away if it's pushed and they have to be moved closer if it's pulled. There is a new condition, which is disarm, uh, which means you cannot perform any attack action abilities, but you can do your other abilities. And then it notes, we now have the ability to discard cards instead of taking damage. So when you take damage, instead you can discard one card or from your hand or two cards from the discard scenario. It does warn you there's a chance you may, dis <laughs> may actually fail this scenario. Now we get into new monster mechanics. So one of the things we are again facing Vermlings. So we are going to need a Vermling Raider card. But we also have the Vermling Raider deck if you want to shuffle that. And we now have an action deck for the monster. The basic Vermling Raider deck. Which is just off camera. I'll see what I can do to get that into camera Maybe once, we, we've, read we, once we've read the intro. So now the monsters have ability cards, so they are going to do the abilities written on the cards instead. And then it explains the rules for traps, where monsters consider traps obstacles, and will only move through them if it's the only way they can actually get an attack that round. So slum slightly new monster mechanics, and now monsters will have ranged attacks. It notes that they will back up before attacking you, like okay. they will instead of having disadvantage. And again, there are the new line of sight rules. So now we're going to read the introduction and any special rules, then go through any tips and tricks on the board. <clears throat> so introduction. So a hole in a wall, B2. Goal, kill all enemies. The tracks are easy to spot. Vermlings have never been known for their subtlety. You follow the scratching and scratching and indicators of a body being dragged until you find yourself approaching the walls of Gloomhaven. The sun is very low, but something isn't right. There isn't just a shadow across the lower section of the wall. It's a hole. The Vermlings have made a nest for themselves by burrowing into the walls of Gloomhaven itself. How industrious. You crouch low and try to sneak closer, but they must have guards watching the entrance. There's a shrill shrieking, and then a number of Vermlings jump from the dark, brandishing their dull, poorly made weapons. No choice now but to defend yourself. Luckily, you've managed to get your second wind, but you'll definitely have a nice long bath after this ordeal. Special Rules Make sure each character has swapped their ability cards marked A for marked B. So this is, again, part of the onboarding, where it is giving you a, um, the card, our decks just got a little bit more complicated. Next we have the conclusion, which we don't want to read. We have a tip, remember, to flip over the ability cards for the Vermling Raiders at the start of each round, after characters have chosen their cards, because that's going to determine their initiative now. Tip, you can loot a money token on the ground by either ending your turn on it, or by playing a loot action. Remember, monsters also drop money when they die. Tip, monsters in this bottom room are not set up at the start of the scenario. They'll only get set up once a character opens the door. Remember, they will still get an action to action them round, though. What do we have over there for tips? We've already read this one about the treasure chest. Uh, traps cause any figure who enters the hex to suffer three damage. Then the trap is removed from the map. And this just tells us where to read when we pick up okay. the chest. So now we got to populate the dungeon. What do we need? And I don't know. Now that you've read this, you might want to move this stuff here. All right. So we are going to put this here. We're going to throw the initiative. I don't know. In that little blank spot? Sure. We're going to put this here. Yeah. Now that we've read all this. And we need the monster deck. Which we'll throw here. Did I shuffle that? I have no idea. Let's shuffle it. Oh, just that one I shuffled. This, this one, you one did? I did oh. not. Okay. Of course, we had super glare right on the monster, so maybe over here. Oh, well, that's where we put the... Let me mix it up with the initiative tracker somewhere else. Whatever. All right, we'll put that up here. 
said, unfortunately, the glare is really bad there, no. right there. Where's the glare? 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 All right, you're going to take one second just to see if this makes anything any better. There we go. That is a little better. That, we got some, rid of some of the glare. Now that we're zoomed in. All right, so we are ready to start scene one, act one. Yeah, the so, book is now instead, there's no there's no maps, no, no, no board anymore. The entire game takes place in the book. We can start in any of yeah. the starting spots. Yep. Can we get to the extra point maybe? You could be even closer if you want. I mean, why could? I could be there. I don't see how that's really closer. Okay, I'm going to go really slow. So make sure you get in there quick, I think. Okay. I'm going to find something in there real quick. It's true, we don't know how fast the worm is or the Yes, we do not. Alright, I will go as fast as fast can be. Alright, so I am ready. I am going at 68. I'm going at 14. And we have to flip. The Vermlings are doing a screaming shot. They're going to push everyone adjacent away and then pack at plus one at ranged. Which means they're probably not moving up, but they go at 85, so they're actually last. Okay. So this is another, uh, for, we have someone in our chat room who uh, has not played the original. So another thing that's new to this is a little initiative tracker, which is kind of a nice touch. Now, normally it's, you kind of need it, you kind of don't, because the cards are right here. Like, I know I'm going at 67, because I have a card that says 67, and I know they're going at 85. But sometimes you might forget, well, I happen to have a 67 and a 68, but if I had a 12 and a 68, I might forget what I went, where at least the set's at the start of the round. And even better, there is an app called the Gloomhaven Helper that tracks all of that for you. The only reason we're not using that is um, I, this is a review copy of the game that I received from Tabletop Renaissance, and I wanted to be able to try it with the components that come in the box first. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the move portion of my shocking advance. And I'm going to scoot up, and I'm going to stop and look at you and be like, should I keep moving? Do you have any ask. problem with me stopping right there? Yeah. Because uh, I'm just, I know they're going to do a uh, push, and if I'm here, they might be able to push me into a trap. So I think I'll just stop right there. Now they're both adjacent to me. And now that they're both adjacent to me, I'm going to hit them with my twirling stabs, which is attack two, targeting all adjacent enemies. So all adjacent enemies suffer two damage plus a separate modifier for each. So I'm going to draw a card for each one. Your deck's upside down. My deck down. is upside down. I shuffled it and then put it upside down. Not very helpful. Okay, so, um, <laughs> more unpainted minis. Well, you only get minis for the characters. So if you buy this box, all you are getting is four unpainted minis. I'll attack this fellow first with two plus zero. So hit him for two. That's number six. Gets hit for two. So number six takes two damage. You track health on this weird little card thing. And then I'm going to attack number five here. Which and again. again Zero, so I would be using, normally we would be using the Gloomhaven Helper, and we would track the enemy attack on this. And now these cards And that is up. number which? I just said it, five. All right, number five, you're not going to have to worry about. Okay. And that's my turn. All right, we are going to start off with the Lure of the Void, which I had in the A deck, but you will note this got better. One enemy within three hexes cannot attack until the end of its next turn. I am going to... It's not going to matter, but I am going to use it on... Do you care which one? No. No, which one? They're both hurt, so... Hmm, let me think. Where is it? I did this wrong. I played these cards wrong. Oh, you know what? I'm in the wrong starting spot. You know what? I'm going to go with it because we played some minutes before. All right, so I disarm him, but then I also force the target to move two with me controlling the action. Oh, sorry. Nice. I like that. And he now drops a gold. And then my other, uh, this is where I screwed up, is loot one. I was thinking I was next to this. Mm. So if you don't mind, I started here, That's and I could fine. loot that. I actually thought I was next to that. And I strengthen you. 
with the wicked scratch. So you are now strengthened. So my next attack, I will have advantage. Okay. And then the used actions go under discard pile. Now the vermlings go. So the first thing they do is they push. So you have to go one further. You get to choose where. Away from them. Well, yes. I'll go there. Sure. Then they are going to attack. We are both the same distance away, so it's whoever was faster. It's going to attack you at plus one. So it attacks you for their basic attack, which is two. So you take two damage. So I'll wow, you scroll totally this can't see this minus one I just drew. So I only have eight hit points left. And that's it for this round. Now this, notice... This fella here, there's oh, no movement? Yeah, that's right. Sorry. Will they move? It's a ranged. There is no movement. They are ranged two. You are not within range yeah. two. Okay. So this has the cycle symbol in the bottom. So we have to reshuffle the monster's deck. Neither the cards, Deanna or I, well, I didn't draw cards. I did not draw you any You did not draw one. The so then we move on to round two. Yeah. Miniatures are very impressive, actually, too. I don't know how well this will show up on the camera, but they are really nice looking units. Okay. All right, I'm good. Yeah, the characters are minis, the bad guys are standees, because if they did otherwise, they would need way too many miniatures in this box set. So I am going at 43. I'm going at 41. So it's me, you, and what, yes. is, what are the vermlings? And the vermlings are this time doing dual daggers at 59. Still after both of us. They're attacking plus zero. They are not moving. Again, this is nice. So one of the things they've done to onboard everyone has added this blue text to the bottom that shows that, hey, there's no move on here, so they're not moving. Oh, nice. Again, why they didn't do it on all the cards, I don't know. Like, I get you're onboarding people, but why they didn't keep it up. So they are going to target two of us if we're, if we're both within range two. Okay. So that's something to watch. I don't think it's going to be an issue because, first, I'm going to use my shield spikes. I'm going to use this portion as a basic move and just move to, to here. Okay. Then I'm going to use my flaming sickle, which has upgraded to the B version, yep. and it will attack oh, nice. and then pull him into the trap. Nice. So I'm going to do an attack three minus one, so I hit him for two. And then I pull him into the trap, and he takes three or more. So he's dead, right? Yep. And he drops a coin. Oh, that's not good. Text router blue. That's Ooh. terrible. That's crappy. Crappy start to your week. We upgraded ours fairly recently. All right. So I am going to start off with a move four. So one, two, three, four onto one of these coins. And then I am going to use Gift of the Void. You can perform an attack two, range three. Oh, excellent. I know just what to do with that. Fit this fellow right here. Ooh, times two. So that so would smart. be, no, four. And he was already hurt, so he is dead. That's one of those recycle symbols. Yes. So I shuffle my deck, but not until the end of the round. Yes, which don't I shuffle it yet. Before and did it, and then she can, of course, trigger me having another move. So, so I pick up at the end of your turn. You will loot anything you're standing on. So I pick up this coin. Now we go to the next turn. Now this turn there are no vermlings out. We do not reshuffle the deck, but we don't draw a card for them. So uh, I'm going to open the door, and we don't draw a card for them until we we see them. Basically, is yes. that how that works? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna go open the door. Are you cool with that? Yeah, I'm gonna go as slow as I can. Great. I'd like to go really slow and go after them, I but think I will see what happens. I don't have much choices left at this point. So yeah. Hmm. So again, one of the biggest things about Gloomhaven is we only had six cards in our hand. We only have two left, and you have to play two cards a turn. One of the ways to lose the game is if you run out of cards. Now, right at this point, all of our cards are getting discarded. So we can rest to get them back. So we could choose to do that at any... As far as... It, the only way it explains it, though, is once you're out of cards. I don't know. I was thinking it was interesting. Is in the other version, we would open the door, and then we'd put out a tile, and we'd put out a bag. It's like, I know what the room's going to look like. We knew that in the old game, too. We don't... We just you're supposed, supposed to. to. Well, you're, we you are... Supposed no, to. you are supposed to. We play mm -hmm. it with hidden information. You are supposed to put out all the yeah, overlays. 
Yes, you can't hide it this way. I'm ready if you're ready. Yeah, just, uh, I'm just thinking. Yeah, I mean, I have no choice. I have two cards left. So. Well, you got to pick an initiative. Yep. All right, 49. 87. Ooh, slow. So. And then we don't flip this yet. Right. Oh, so that's going to be terrible. I know, but that's as fa that was the fastest I could go. And that's even worse because, uh, hold on, my yeah, card's going right? to be useless. I didn't realize until I turned and looked at my cards and I'm like, you I'm planned that terribly slow. Well, then I should go open the door. Yeah. Except then I don't get to collect gold. Mm -hmm. There is that. <laughs> That's the problem with that. Do I let you open it? Yeah, I don't see why not. All right, I'm going to move two to here. Technically, I don't pick that up until the end of the round. Um, I don't. I did. All my heals are used, so that's it. I could attack, but there's nothing to attack. Okay, so I think the first thing I'm going to do is. Well, we suddenly saved zero viewers. We somehow lost everyone. Oh, that's weird. that's weird because if a stream health says 100, I don't show any errors. I don't show any drop you frames. No, I mean, like, something went wrong that we... Oh, I have, I have a burn card now. I just didn't notice. It's a move and then burn. That's weird. I can move six, but then I lose the card. Well, we do want to get that treasure chest. Yeah, I know. One, I don't two, think we're running three, out of four, time. Five, six. I don't feel any pressure to actually do that. So, huh. It's different than I thought it was going to be. Because I just saw the move six and I got excited. But now that I've noticed it's a burn, I'm just going to... Got a spinning go. wheels, had to refresh. Took some time to come back. That's weird because they said I have no errors on our end this time. But I, I am showing zero viewers now, so... I will use Blinding Sickle as a move four. One, two... And now you opens. pause. So we're going to mark the door as opened. And we're going to spawn new bad guys. Which is just two, right? Two regulars. One goes wow. here. One goes here. Okay. And then I go three, four. We immediately do this too. Oh, they're doing the same thing. Screaming shot again. They're going to push us back and use ranged attacks. Okay. And then I am using Desert Knight, which is an attack to target one enemy within two hexes and disarm. So one enemy, and it's not a ranged attack. One enemy within two hexes suffers two damage plus modifier and cannot attack until the end of its next turn. So what? Target one enemy within range two, but it's not a ranged attack. But it's attack. not a ranged attack. It doesn't have Weird. the ranged icon. I know. So I hit him for one, and he's disarmed. Which number is this? Number one. It is weird. But I'm attacking with my crazy sickle chain sickle things so oh hey i had strength and i think i'll actually use it no you got that, like did i not have any more no okay we can go away you didn't use it yep i'm out of cards I'll yeah go. i don't know router i bought on um amazon all right so the bad guys go at 85 so you get pushed one you get to choose where thankfully He's disarmed, he still pushes me? Disarmed means he can't attack. Okay, cool. I will you get to choose where. Not going to do and then that. he will attack at range two at plus one. So but you take he won't two. attack because he's disarmed. But he's disarmed, you're right. So the other one can't reach you at range two. So you're correct. And, and there's you no know move, what? I'll so that. he doesn't move. Is that also correct? Yeah, if they don't move. Yep, okay. All right, then it's the end of the round. Because it's the end of the round and we have no cards left, we must short rest. You can't choose to have a long rest. There's no such thing as long rest in this. I know. Long rest doesn't You keep exist. trying to do that. That's right. Oh my. <laughs> All right. Show people what card you're losing. I am losing my shocking advance. Or you could spend one health. Not Good, lose it. but I've decided that it was acceptable. Once. I am losing turn out the lights, which is fine. What stinks is when you lose your burn card instead of burning it. Okay, I'm going to start with that. And then.
Are you going to end up next to a bad guy? I don't know. I'm trying to decide what I'm doing. Let's run down there and get the treasure chest. I mean, that sounds too soon. Okay, that's fine. Or... Does mesh work in Canada? I know there's enough of that stuff that does not work well in Canada. Oh, no, we should try. Here. Oh, I can't do it from here. Shoot. I should have turned on that hotspot thing to see if people could see it. Okay. Oh, yeah, we should try that sometime. Because then we can when tell we people, like, where should we move? And people could tell us yeah, where to move true. and see if it works. Yeah, we should, All right. we should test that out. I am at 23. I'm at 62. So, and they are at, they're doing something new. Nope, double daggers again. 59, dual daggers. They go before me. So I go first. You're in my spot, I think. No, I move three to the doorway. Then I muddle within range three. So I muddle. Oh, this one's no longer disarmed. This fellow right here? He is muddled, so it's not going to matter much. And then I disarm him within range three. Excellent. And then I can force him to move two. Oh, and march him Which right way? into the chat. I'm thinking up here. Yeah. Yeah, so. Um, and he takes three damage, which doesn't kill him, unfortunately. Which means he's going to hit me, but that's all right. He's disarmed, so he can't attack. So we're all good. That's excellent. Yeah. So go for the other guy if you can, or go for the yeah, chest. Yeah, well, I was going to go down to the chest. Once I'm at the chest, the other guy is far away from me. So i got to think about this for a second. Uh, so I don't remember if I actually held up my cards. Those were the cards I used. I mean, I might as well hit this guy before I leave. Yeah, like if right? you can finish him off, great. So, if I do a ranged attack and he's adjacent to me, you I'm have at disadvantage. disadvantage. So move first. I don't, if I move first, I'm too far away from them. I'm oh, your range go, isn't high enough? I'm going to go quite far. So, I will, we don't need much to kill him, though. I think I'd rather. One. Yeah. So, I might be better off just using a basic attack. You could do that, then there's no disadvantage. Then there's no disadvantage. I will use a basic attack of two. Minus two. So, you know. That was, oh well. I should have done it. What's and your then, speed? I'm going to move four. You don't even go because... yet. No, no. Cheating you went, again. and then the vermling. Should yeah, go. I'm like you're cheating again. The vermling's disarmed, so he's not attacking. No, but this one. This fellow attacks um... range two, targets two, but he doesn't move. Silly bad guys so, onboarding. All right, same so difference. same difference. All right. <laughs> I missed this guy. I move one, two, three, four. With my movement here. Okay, so what's the number on that treasure? 14. So grab the... Glossary. Glossary. Look up 14. You have gained... What does it say? Well, there's no way that's right. Sorry. How is there no way that's right? Gain three money tokens. That's great. Where your hand was pointing, it said something like Spawn of Chaos. I wasn't pointing at anything. <laughs> and you remove the chest. Money. Why is that answer? That's okay. What are you looking at? Oh, I was wondering where I should put the treasure chest. That's it all. It goes I'm back done. in here. That's why we have this. Okay. Now it's the end of the round. Discard our cards. And this did not have a reshuffle this time. Are you going to go kill this guy? So I'll just, just go collect go some gold. Him if you <laughs> no, I'm just, I might go collect some gold. Oh, except that's a range. Go See, I hate loot cards that are on, um, that are on the move part of. I mean, not terribly fast, but. Okay. I am going slow at 68. Okay. I'm Please going at 38. And they are going... 
nothing special. This is exactly how they acted in the last scenario. So yes, these, again, uh, we have someone in the chat who was cur curious about onboarding. These are way simpler than the ones in the full game. Like, there are no cards where the monster just does a basic move and a basic attack in the beginning game. All right, At so... 50. I'm going to go with that's right I'm going to use this one for a basic movement and I'm going to go one two and then I'm going to use the desert knight to attack two hexes away and disarm him and I will hit him for three and he is also disarmed what number number five and three that's it that's my big exciting move then it's them? Yep. There, I get attacked this time. So. So number one will go Number first. one will attack me. For two. It's my first time getting hit. I am going to... Let's discard a burner card. No, I don't care. It's not like... I'll take two. I would hope so. I don't even know where my health is. That shows how often this has happened. And then this fella would move up one towards me. And then he can't attack because he's been disarmed. I am now down to four health. Oh no. And then yes, we go he on to a new attack. round. No, we don't. No. Nope. Stop. Okay. Oh, you get a turn too. Jeez. Yeah. All right. Let the Void Maiden go. Void Warden. Warden. Jeez. <laughs> it's because it, I need new eyes and that's a little tiny pawn. All right. So I start by using the Black Boon to move four. One, two, three, four. And then I use Wicked Scratch. You may attack four. Ooh. Well, I think I will attack this fellow that's right here next to me. So five easily finishes off that Vermin. All right. It is the end of the round. I only have one card left, so I must short rest. As must I. I am going to give up a heal and move card. It is my move four. I, I think... Uh, I don't know. No, I want to keep my move four, so I am going to take another health. Well, I am sad to give up my flaming sickle, which is so, my loot card, but I can deal. Instead, I lose my loot card, which I wanted the move four to go with the loot card. But that's oh. fine. You cannot lose a second health to... Oh well. Alright, this is probably the last round. Oh, when I pick up this gold, it's under me. Sorry for moving the camera. Oh, that was... It seemed to have gotten rid of my card that was fast. That's not good. Alright. Yeah, I can end it. I just I was hoping to get over there and collect those last two vote tokens. I guess we'll just finish it. All good with just ending it. Yeah, we don't need to go screw around and get all the money, though it is tempting. It is tempting. We did get to the walls of Moonhaven. Um, so yeah, I'll make sure I even go quick to end this. All right, instead. Alrighty. All right, I'm, I'm at, at 38. 23. Ooh. You really are going to go fast. And we get to see a new card? Yes. Careful throw. <laughs> they will move to it. It's a move, then an attack minus one. Again, these simplified cards are kind of laughable. They're, they're, Isaac must have got a lot of complaints about people not being able to beat the initial scenario in Gloomhaven. Because scenario one in Gloomhaven is not easy. The, this, is, this is ridiculously... The ramp up to understanding the monster AI in the original version. Oh, it's it, terrible. There really is a learning curve there. But so not only that, it's it's learning the card management of your own hand. Uh, yeah. It's such a big it's part of the elements. game. Where here, like, I haven't felt like I was going to run out of cards no. yet. All right, so we are going to start off with Suggestion, uh, which, nope, sorry, wrong one. We're going to start off with Lure of the Void, range three, force the target to perform a move two. Oh, he jumps into a pit and dies. Terrible. 
tragic. And then I'm going to use my bottom action as a move too. <laughs> yeah, I can speed things up to say that I'm just only going to move and end my turn there. So I can get yeah, and point. we get one more gold each. And that's it. We get the da 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 Conclusion. We do finish off the round. Like, we could try to run and get the other gold, but, like, there was no point. Like, there was no way for us both to do yeah. that. So, with the foul... Well, sorry, my eyes need to adjust. Foul nest cleared of those wretched creatures. You take your time searching every nook. Surely the city guard will want to know about this. It can't be safe to have vermlings tunneling through the walls. It's hard enough to fend off their raids as it is. Eventually, you do manage to find an unexpectedly large amount of gold under some rotten wooden boards. Sifting through the treasure, you also find a strange note. In crude scratching, it details some business arrangements between the Vermlings and someone by the name of Roland. Apparently, in exchange for supplying fresh corpses, mm. Roland would pay the Vermlings in gold. And judging by the amount here, the Vermlings managed to kill quite a few people before he put an end to it. It's the best lead you have, so it's time to ferret out Roland. After resting at the Sleeping Lion, of course. We get 25 gold each. The item shop opens, and we have opened the Black Ship D5. These each one? No, we'll get to it. Now i got to go back to the other book. Okay. So now we jump back to Scenario 2 Complete. Congratulations on completing Scenario 2. Remember, it doesn't end until the end of the round, so you might have a chance to grab more gold. Be sure to read the conclusion text. Remember to fully refresh, recovering all cards, removing all condition tokens, and returning to maximum hit points. In addition, characters receive 25 gold, which we'll deal with now along with the new money. So count how many money tokens you have and convert them to gold. In this scenario, they are worth two each. So I get 10. So I have 35 gold. I have 4. And I have no idea what I do with pencil. 35 gold. Oh, and the other reason there are multiple character sheets, because there is no character retirement in this, is you can play these characters in Gloomhaven now. Oh. So if someone does retire, instead of, especially later on in the game you when you've unlocked consent, everything. I just want to play the Red Guard. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Um, so now we return the money token to the tray. Now that we've gotten our money. They don't get to keep it? They don't get to so keep shiny. them. And then of course they don't fit in here very well. No. Alright, so next thing we do. Starting now and in between every scenario, we can buy items, sell items to the shop, or trade items to other characters. Which should that have been in the original. Trade items to other characters. That is something that was missing from Gloomhaven. So Blue silly that you couldn't. It was so silly you couldn't trade items. So that's a rule we may house rule into Gloomhaven. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to find the encounter deck, or the, the item deck, which I did a little bit of pre-work here of, of unpackaging it. So this is kind of a nice touch. So we have these, and they're numbered. And it says 36. Well, we need to find 1 through 13. 1 through 13. So we find 1 through 13, and we have that. And then what's nice is there's a divider here showing available items and unavailable items. We're going to put the divider there. I'm going to put the rest of the items here. Nice. And now we have a deck that shows which. There's way more than 13 cards there, so there's multiples there's of There's multiples. Items. There's four of a lot of them. Nice. So I'm just going to do that because we're probably going to go shopping soon. So I thought that was really cool. So buying items, you pay the gold on, on the items thing to buy it. Um, selling items, you do it for half rounded up. And we can trade items freely. I can't believe that they didn't do that. But you still cannot trade gold. There's still no party gold. Fair. So you're still mercenaries, you're still a little well, selfish. mine is mine. Yes. Um, so items for people who haven't played Gloomhaven have the item name at the top, a really cool piece of artwork, how much it costs, how many of them there are in the deck. So there are two eagle-eyed goggles. Um, this shows that it's from Jaws of the Lion. And that shows where you can wear it. So there are helmets, body, feet, hands, and small items. In this particular game, you are allowed one of each. Okay. So only one small item. Uh, and then it tells you what they do. So now we are allowed to go shopping and buy any items we want. So there we have the end of scenario number two of Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. So we're going to have a, a uh, wrap up here. 
And that's what we didn't do in the last one. We should have talked a bit more this about what we thought. This feels so easy after playing the yes. old Gloomhaven. So that, that is one thing. Talk, 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 about, talk about onboarding compared to the original. Scenario 1 in Gloomhaven is hard. I think it took us three tries before we beat it. I know people have given up on the game. We very quickly, at four players, switched down to playing on easy difficulty. This is so much easier for learning the game, and it's being so much more gentle on us. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't get condition cards like move zero, attack zero in the original Gloomhaven. And the fact that they're, like, the first time, the first scenario, so I'm kind of going back to our last recording, the first scenario, you don't even use these cards. So it really does a good job of showing you a little bit of the game at a time. Mm -hmm. And even now that we are using these cards, these are basic versions, and they're only four of them. So even that's simpler. Okay, but I will say, having already played Gloomhaven and coming in and having them just release a bit of information at a time, I'm still not bored. I still had a good That's time. That's true. Like, I'm not sitting here going, oh, God, when are we going to get to the real full game? Now, I will admit we are having a bit of a problem, Deanna in particular, with using rules that haven't been introduced I, yet. I'm trying. Uh, for example, in the first scenario, you cannot use your cards as basic actions. They don't introduce that until scenario two, uh, which almost makes me wish the A cards didn't have it. But then you'd need a full set but of B you'd cards. you a full set of B cards, yeah. So when we do go into Scenario 3, there will be some things we're going to change. Um, so I, I got to admit, I do. I dig the book. Works really well. Um, the, it looks fantastic. Like, the artwork is better than the original because you're not using overlays. Like, so you have stuff like this spiky thing sticks out past the hexes. Just looks neater, right? Plus, I got to say, the fact that we don't have to sit here and hunt through and find the right size spiky log to fit this space to... You know, yes. And yeah, that takes time, and this makes it much more quick. And the fact that we have, I know they're two super simple, but we've went through two scenarios in one night, and we're going to do a third Yeah, one. probably an hour and a half. i got to say, some things are a little silly, like the doors. I'm putting a token on, it's a little weird, but eh, it works. You'll remember it's okay. And then this is the what you do if this was destroyed. You would put these out, yeah. which I, I know people can kind of only half see it in the video here. But they're little destroyed tokens that you do, because there's no works. overlays to remove. I really like the new way to tell what the monsters are. Mm -hmm. That's much easier to read than the old hex version. I didn't think I would like this with the spine in the middle, but it's just so much quicker and simpler. Yeah. Like, boom, we put up the, the spine map and let's go. You know? uh, so we are working our way through the scenarios one by one. Uh, again, I am Mo Tuzno at the Tabletop Bellhop. You can find us at tabletopbellhop.com or all over the web is Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Um, I don't think I have too much else to say. If you dig this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button and ding that bell. Uh, that does let more people see us on YouTube because without people interacting with our videos, they tend to get lost in the mix and they don't get caught by what the algorithm. So we would love it if you'd interact with this video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and all of that. If you did notice we played something wrong, please put a note in the comments if you can and throw us a timestamp, but that's not necessary. Uh, we did catch a couple things Deanna did wrong just based on her Gloomhaven experience. So the stuff she was using. Me. I didn't screw up this one. I don't think. Don't think so. So you never know. Uh, so thank you for joining us. We are going to end this video now. So for Tabletop Bellhop, I am Mo Tuzano. And I'm Deanna. Good night and game, game on. on. I don't know where the bell is. Oh, we need a bell.